Welcome to Vinyasa in Verse, the podcast where we connect mind, body, and spirit through poetry and practice. I'm Leslie Ann Hobayan. Together, we'll explore different ways of connecting with our innermost selves and how to tap into the flow of the universe. Because once that happens, anything is possible. Your best life starts now. Hello, loves. Welcome to another episode of Vinyasa Inverse. Hope you're doing great today. It's a beautiful day or night, depending on when you are listening to this. Um, so we are here with a new episode, and I am taking a cue from Hafez and his great oracle of poems. We're going to put it up to the mic. And... <laughs> This is the poem that has come forward to start our episode. It's called, We Might Have to Medicate You. Resist your temptation to lie by speaking of separation from God. Otherwise, we might have to medicate you. In the ocean, a lot goes on beneath your eyes. Listen, they have clinics there too for the insane who persist in saying things like, I am independent from the sea. God is not always around gently pressing against my body. <laughs> that makes me laugh because the, there are clinics there for the insane. It's like this idea that we are separate from God is insane, um, according to this poem, according to Hafez. And I just, I just love this, this line. It's just... Listen, they have clinics there, too, for the insane who persist in saying things like, I'm independent from the sea. God is not always around gently pressing against my body. It's like, no, no, God is everywhere. God is inside of you. You are part of God. It's all like the separation is not really happening. It's not a thing. It is uh, very much an illusion. And so... What does that mean for you in terms of your life and how you live it and in how you seek out life's purpose? Um, these are some questions that are coming up for me from this poem. I just like, we, have, we might have to medicate you. <laughs> I feel like that's Daniel Ladinsky's take on things. Um, and I just, I just am so amused by that. Um, but yeah, it's about, it's about knowing that we are divine. We are connected, inextricably connected with God. Whether you consider God as this um, external being source um, or you understand yourself to be also part of God, to be part of source, it doesn't matter. It's, we're all, it's all connected. It's all like, you know, linked up that the idea of separation is really just an illusion. It's, it's, it's an illusion for us to try to grasp our existence as human beings and to say, all right, well, I'm here on the planet in a three-dimensional body, human body, separated, quote unquote, separated from God. How do I operate? How do I move through the world? What is my life's purpose here since I now suffer from that separation. Um, so yeah, so just some things to, to ponder upon. Now, I want to admit from the get-go that my brain is a little less clear today. Uh, the other day, I well, yesterday, I had a very massive migraine that I was wrangling with, and it lasted all day. And I was thinking the whole time, like, hmm, what is this about? What is the message that my body is trying to tell me? And I listened for it as painful as it was. And I think that there is another level of growth that's happening within me that my body is trying to keep up with, that the growth is happening so rapidly that the body's like, whoa, hold on. The container isn't quite expanding as quickly as you are. So, whoa, horsey. <laughs> and so I think that that pressure in my head was me growing, you know, my, my spirit, soul, self growing, my inner light, my divine light growing and pressing up against the physical container of this body, finding a way out 
It was not pleasant. <laughs> I took all the things, you know, and took a nap and it was still like not cool. So my brain is feeling a little foggy right now, trying to recover from that. Um, so we'll see what happens with this episode. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the idea of magic. Now, lately in my social media, if you guys follow me there on Instagram and on Facebook, it's the handle, the way you can find me is just Leslie Ann Hobayan. And um, lately I've been talking about, <coughs> excuse me, magic. And when I talk about magic, it's so funny. Part of me thinks, you know, part of me wonders if folks are thinking of magic, like magic tricks, like, you know, the art of illusion, the, the guy who's wearing the tuxedo and the top hat and pulls the rabbit out of the hat or saws the woman in half or has a magic wand that like is a wand and then it's, you know, softens and it's limp and it's like, oh, it doesn't really work. You know, that kind of magic, show magic. Or do people understand that when I say magic, that I really mean tapping into the divine, into the spirit plane through divination tools. And divination tools are things like tarot cards, like oracle cards. Um, some people use pendulums. Some people use astrology. I love astrology. Uh, some use runes, which are the ancient um, symbols imprinted on stones, usually, that come from um, the ancient Celtic practices. Uh, the I Ching is another one. Um, it's so funny because sometimes... I like to think of, and I might, you know, I might get flack for this, but I like to think of meditation as a kind of magic because it is a practice in which I can connect with the divine. It's a divination tool for me. Um, I don't know if a lot of people think that way, but that is my experience of it. So I just wanted to, to touch base a little bit, talk a little bit about magic in relationship to healing, because I talk a lot about healing on this podcast. Uh, I talk about identity and presence and authenticity. And so how does magic come into the fold? How does that play a role in all of this work that I'm, that I'm doing and all of these conversations and discussions I'm having on the podcast? And it really is about trying to bridge that gap between the physical world, the human body, the earth plane, with the spirit plane, with the intangible, with the sky. You know, I like to say that I am a, uh, a person who, whose purpose is to join earth and sky, you know, the divine and the earthly, the tangible with the intangible. I, I am that person who creates the bridge. And so one of the things that helps me create that bridge, because it's a very tricky place. It's so interesting to think of it. It's a liminal space, right? It's that in-between space. And here I am as a Filipina American who is an American born, born person, uh, born to immigrant parents. And so I don't necessarily belong here as an American because in the United States, American is really somebody who's white, right? I mean, we're, we're going to just call it like it is. And when I go to the Philippines, that's not really my home either. Even though I look Filipino, the Filipinos there know right away that I'm not Filipino from the Philippines. Like they, they see me as American, which is so interesting. Like I don't even have to talk and they can smell America on me. <laughs> I always like to say that. It's like they could smell it. Like I don't know what it is. I could be wearing clothes that I bought there you know, and like play the part of native Filipino. And they will just know, they'll just know, they'll just look at me, oh, American, <laughs> you know. So for me, I've always lived in what's called the diaspora. I've always lived in that in between space of not really having a place to call home, not feeling like I really belong anywhere except in between, between the US and, and, and the Philippines. You know, it's like this nowhere place. And there are folks who share that similar identity who I talk with. And we're like, yeah, there is no 
real place that we can call home, like geographically speaking. And so because we live in the United States, we have to make our home here, but we don't fully feel at home. And so I've gotten used to this existence of living in the in-between, in the liminal space. So it makes sense to me <laughs> that I um, feel called to be this conduit, this bridge between earth and sky, between the human physical three-dimensional world and the spiritual three-dimensional realm. And so it gets a little, I don't want to say tricky, but I'm going to say tricky. It gets a little tricky sometimes for me to be in the in-between. Either I'm fully here on earth. I mean, I am a Taurus sun. And so my, my tendency is to want to be grounded. If Taurus is an earth sign, very into physicality, into material, into textures. And so either I'm fully on earth grounded in my body, interacting with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which then, you know, runs the risk of getting wrapped up in ego. You know, ego is like, oh, look at all these things that people want us to do. Look at all the expectations. Look at all the accolades that we're supposed to want to get. This approval that we want to get when really higher self is like, mm -mm, we don't want that. Ego, stop getting yourself wrapped up in the earth stuff. You know, <laughs> so that that's what happens. Um, and then when I when I connect with the spirit realm, with the the three dimensional, I'm uh, sorry, fifth dimensional plane, through meditation, you know, through other uh, practices, Kundalini yoga practice, regular yoga practice, um, breath work practices, those things that even yoga nidra, you know, that take us beyond our physical bodies. Sometimes I just go and I am not in my body. I just go somewhere. You know, there are times, there are experiences that I've had, meditative experiences, you know, whatever it is. And even, even sound healing, gong baths and the like, I will go somewhere, not know where I went. And then suddenly I hear, oh, everyone come back to the room. I'm like, oh, I went somewhere, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's been a work in progress for me to figure out ways to firmly straddle between those realms. Because again, the bridge, I am the bridge, but how can I be a bridge if I am only in one place, you know, only here on earth or totally checked out in 5D land getting who knows what kind of awesome insight and information. My subconscious knows. <laughs> I'll tell you that. My my conscious mind, no idea. No idea. Ego is like, where do we go? What's happening? Um, what did we learn? Why are we, why, where, what, what? Yeah. Yeah. My ego is just is like, who, what just happened? So what I'm doing to practice being in that liminal space to occupy both 3D and 5D is to turn to divination tools because they are tangible, because I can hold them, I can feel them, um, access, you know, them through my five senses. That is a portal. That's a doorway for me to enter into the spirit realms while keeping my other foot in the earth realm. Okay. So that. Hopefully that makes sense. So I want to give you an example because a lot of folks, you know, you hear a lot of things like healing is so important and so this, and it's so great and liberating and empowering. And yes, these are all good things. And they're all very big words, intangible words that for most folks, you're like, well, that sounds good, but I really don't know what that means. What does it mean to heal? Like, really? What is that? I, I don't know. It sounds like something cool, but I actually got to go like do this other thing that I'm familiar with that feels concrete and tangible. The whole healing thing. I, mm, I don't know. It feels okay. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it sounds great. I just don't know what it is. So, um, so I want to incorporate a little bit of magic into this 
process of healing, um, for people to not focus so much on healing, but to focus on, all right, let me connect with me. Let me connect with my inner self. How do I do that? Let me try some divination tools. Let me try an Oracle card. Maybe I'm feeling a little unclear of about the day, about how I want to proceed in the day. Maybe I'm feeling a little vague or without direction for a writing project. Or maybe I have a decision to make. Do I take this job? This job offer sounds amazing, but the job is like kind of eh. Do I do I do I accept the offer? Do I not? You know, and and sometimes we turn to the tarot, we turn to the oracle, we turn to pendulums. And again, I mean it's all up to you as an individual on whether you want to quote unquote believe in these tools. You know, there's a lot of cynicism out there. And my question is, well, I have a few questions, but my main question is, how is that cynicism serving you? Because let's say you have that decision to make between, you know, a, taking a job offer and not. And I'm not saying leave that decision to chance. You know, it's like, here, let's roll the dice. Let's see what happens. Let's spin the bottle. Let's do our um, magic eight ball. <laughs> Although the magic eight ball can be seen as a divination tool. Um, there is a way of tapping into this other wealth of knowledge that's available to us, a wealth of, you know, some guidance. And it doesn't hurt. I mean... For those who are cynical about tarot and magic and things like that, ask yourself why. Like, where did those stories come from? Who told you that the tarot, for example, is made up or is something that's bad or whatever it is? Like, whatever your opinion is of, like, well, let's just use tarot as the example, like the tarot cards. You have a story about it. Where does that story come from? Where does that meaning come from? And this is just an invitation. This is an example for you to examine where your beliefs come from. Because if we're going to do any healing, it all starts with looking at where we are right now. Where are we right now? What beliefs are we operating from? Where did those beliefs come from? Because they came from somewhere. You're not born a baby with beliefs in the bassinet with you, if you know what I mean, right? The people around you, the people who raised you, caregivers, teachers, adults, they all have their stuff that they are sharing with you, whether intentionally or not. And so as a baby and a toddler, you are absorbing those things and those limiting beliefs are, or any beliefs are being formed. And so we take them as automatic truths. We blindly just kind of follow them and don't even question them. So my, my invitation now is for you to pause and ask, where does my belief about divination tools come from? We'll just take it as an example, because I'm not going to say, oh, pick a belief, any belief, because you're going to be like, well, what, where do I start? You'll get overwhelmed and not even know like, okay, what is a belief? What's truth? And then you start going into some existential crisis. And I don't want to trigger that at all. I don't want to have that, that happen to you. So let's start with one question. How do you feel about divination tools? How do you, how do you feel about or, uh, tarot cards? And you can write that down and then ask yourself, where does that story come from? Where does that belief come from? Is it something like a distant aunt may have said like an offhanded remark when you were one day playing with some tarot deck that you happen across at some garage sale or whatever? Oh, don't touch that. That's evil. That's, you know, that's the devil. If that great aunt, you know, that distant aunt said that, you know, where does she get that belief? Tarot cards are not evil. Only if you believe them to be. Everything is neutral. 
right? It is us as individuals, as humans, as flawed humans, who assign meaning to things, whether it's objects like the tarot or results and outcomes of things that, um, you know, actions that you might have taken or, you know, decisions that were made, results or outcomes from something that you had. Like, so for example, um, submitting work to a journal, maybe it results in a rejection. They declined your work. You can create meaning around that as a personal thing. Like, oh my God, they suck because they don't like my work. I can't believe they don't like my work. My work is so freaking awesome. How could they not like my work? Or you could read it as, well, that was not a home for my amazing work. Let me, I've been redirected in another, to, to point in a different way to maybe try submitting to this place. You know, here I've got information. Okay, I'm not going to submit work to that journal because we're not a good fit. So let me go look for another one. You know, or you could just be like, okay, well, maybe poetry is not my thing and I got to write nonfiction instead. You know, it's up to you. It's up to us to decide what meaning we want to assign things. We have that choice you know, and we forget that all too often. So let this be a reminder. You have a choice in how you create meaning from anything in your life. As long as you can feel that inner truth resonating inside of your body, follow that. Follow your heart, follow your intuition and create meaning from there. Don't just create meaning like, you know, some bullshit thing like, well, they they think that I'm just too good for them. You know, that journal, they think that I'm too good for them. That's ego talking. Now, you need to make that distinction, okay? You know when you're totally full of crap. <laughs> so, that said, what I want to do for this episode is to draw a tarot card so I have a deck here. It's called the Light Seers Tarot and um, beautiful art. So if you're watching on YouTube, you get the benefit of seeing the card that I draw. For those that are listening on the podcast, well, you're just going to have to pop over to YouTube, skip to whatever the minute mark is, probably around 22 minutes, maybe 30, depending, um, to see the tarot. <laughs> image. The artwork is beautiful. Um, and the, and the person who made these cards is go, goes by the name of Chris Ann. So amazing stuff. So when you are, um, turning to the tarot, usually you ask a question before drawing a card because you want, you can't just like draw the card and be like, Oh, okay. Like you're setting up a meaning you're setting up a question so that you can read the card for the meaning in relationship to the question that you've asked. Just pulling a card really doesn't do anything. You just pull a card. Oh, great. Now, how am I supposed to read that? Like, what meaning am I supposed to make from that? Well, you didn't ask a question. So who knows? Could be anything, right? I just finished saying that you can make meaning out of anything. Um, so for today, let's ask the question of... Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. What? Hmm. I got to think of a question. This is so embarrassing. I'm usually good at preparing a question ahead of time with my tarot <laughs> or coming up with one right away. But I told you my brain is a little foggy from that migraine. So the question I ask for today for to with, yes, for today is, what am I not seeing on my path to healing? What am I not seeing on my path to healing? Okay, so I'm just going to draw a card. Usually I have the card spread out across the desk or the table. And then I feel for any intuitive hits. But this one, I'm just cutting the deck and picking the one off top. And I've got the nine of cups. So the question is, what 
am I not seeing on my healing journey? So we look at the little guidebook, Nine of Cups. And for those of you watching on YouTube, here's the card. Look at this beautiful artwork. And let me read what the guidebook says. The universe is gifting you your desire, choosing joy, manifested dreams, gratitude, and abundance. So what am I not seeing on my healing journey is joy. You know, for me, possibly, because this healing journey is a lifetime, you know, we move in spirals and there's so many layers of healing. Like, yes, I feel awesome. I feel amazing. I feel like, hallelujah, I'm healed. But I know that there are even more layers to work through to allow for them to peel away and to heal in order to become the, the most ultimate, brightest, authentic, highest self version of me ever, right? But there's so many layers. So my healing journey is continuing. But what I'm not seeing is joy, is abundance, choosing joy, lots of gratitude. And so maybe perhaps what I can read from this is that I'm too serious in my healing journey. You know, I got to heal, got to heal, got to heal, which is so funny because I have created this really fun free writing workshop called Writing Magic that I'm so excited to um, to hold and host. And for those of you that are listening, it's going to be on Thursday, August 12th at 12 noon Eastern time. If you want to join, um, it's totally free to do. Just sign up um, at the website that's in the show notes. It's suryagian.com slash writing hyphen magic. Easy enough, right? And it's just an hour and a half where we're going to play around with some writing prompts, some tarot cards, and just generate some, some fun because we all need that. Everything's been so serious. So let's have some fun. Um, but I'm going to read what the, what the guidebook says about the Nine of Cups. This is a card of abundance and happiness and is often fittingly called the wish card. Oh, I love it. What have you been wishing for? Allow yourself to experience how fulfilling this journey can be and fill your life with all the laughter and bliss needed to spur you into the next phase of your happiness. Take stock of all that feel, all the feels that are surfacing and remember to practice gratitude for the manifestation of your dreams. The appearance of this card in your spread is an auspicious message of prosperity, harmony, and getting what you desire. What you have been working toward is coming to you. So enjoy life's pleasures and sink into the awe and wonder of a joyous heart. Hmm. And here's a little, I guess, mantra. I open my grateful heart to the gifts that are coming my way. Oh, I love it. So what am I not seeing on my healing journey? All these gifts that are coming from the periphery. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm on my, I, this is what I imagine. I'm on my healing path and my healing journey. It's, an, it's a literal path and I'm just focused on the path. Like I just got my blinders on and I'm walking straight ahead, following the path, following the path, not even stopping to look around and enjoy the scenery to enjoy whatever gifts might be coming from the left, from the right, you know? And so this car is coming forward and saying, hey, listen, girlfriend, you got some stuff coming at you, pay attention. <laughs> so hopefully that resonates for you, wherever you might be on your path, whether it's a healing journey or not, everyone is on their own life's path. And so use this card as a cue to pause to look around and say, hey, there is abundance around me. To be open to receive whatever might come your way that you don't even see coming a mile away. And to show gratitude, always show gratitude for the little gifts, even for the gifts that may not even be coming. Just to be grateful for the breath that you have. And that's all. And that's it. That's, that's tarot, you know? It feels so good, at least for me. So I hope that with this um, episode, you're able to think a little bit more about how magic can enhance this journey of healing, 
of revising the versions we currently are and letting those layers peel away so that we can be even more authentic versions of ourselves and letting the divination tools of tarot or oracle, crystals, pendulums, meditations, sound healing, let those assist you on your journey. They're not necessary, right? But I don't know about you, feels good to have help. You know, I am not, I'm done with being on the struggle bus as a marker of strength, as a marker of like, well, I can do this myself. Self-reliance is awesome. I am strong and that is that. Mm-mm. I am done with that. Like, I'll be strong. Cool. But you know what? If I got help, if I got help from community and from people and I got help from divination tools, sign me up because we are so much more powerful when we work in community, when we work with tools that can help us. And why would you want to work at half power, like half mast, half, you know, like half anything? Don't you want to be full? Don't you want to express the fullness of you? You want to be loud and amplified and freaking awesome? Grab all the tools you know can help you radiate, right? Why would you leave that? Why would you leave that to the side? I wouldn't. So that's my invitation to you, my friends. <sighs> I hope that feels like you've got some better understanding, some insight on how to use some tools that might feel a little unfamiliar. And hopefully you'll try it out. Cool? Okay, so I'm going to read a poem from, this is like becoming my most, one of my favorite books is The World I Leave You, Asian American Poets on Faith and Spirit. And every poem that I've read in here on the show has been just what I needed. Um, and so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Hafez book and just kind of randomly filter through. And ooh, which one do I read? Okay. This is by Shin Yu Pai. It's called Burning Monk. From the remains of his cremation, the monks recovered the seat of Tik Kwang Dok's consciousness. The bloodless protest to awaken the heart of the oppressor offered at the crossing of Fan Ding Feng and Lei Van Duet, doused in gasoline and immolated by four meter flames, the orange robed arhat folded in the stillness of full lotus, his body withering, his crown blackening, his flesh charring, his corpse collapsing, his heart refusing to burn, his heart refusing to burn, his heart refusing to burn. Hmm. May your hearts refuse to burn. And that, my friends, is our episode. And we will close it as we always do. The divine light in me bows 